Good evening, everybody. I'm Millie Cox, Chairman of the Board of the World Affairs Council of Charlotte. And with me is Lubomir Stambuck, our President and Chief Executive Officer. On behalf of our Board of Directors, Lubomir and I welcome you to what promises to be a spectacular evening tonight, honoring a remarkable man, Tim Belk. Where is Tim? There he is. There he is. Welcome to tonight's program. I'm delighted at the turnout this evening to honor Tim Belk. With an extremely busy Charlotte community calendar, and numerous other commitments that pull us all in every direction, I want to thank you for being here tonight to pay honor to Tim, who has truly given so much to Charlotte, the Carolinas, and well beyond. Now it's my privilege to welcome the following honorary councils who are in attendance here tonight. The honorary councils provide important consular representation in North Carolina for their respective countries. Please hold your applause while I introduce them to you. The Honorable Wayne Cooper, Honorary Consul of Mexico. The Honorable Dr. Claudio Carpano, Honorary Consul of Italy. The Honorable Laura Mayer Wellman, the Honorary Consul of France. The Honorable Chris Domini, the Honorary Consul of Hungary. And the Honorable Peter Vasichko, the Honorary Consul of the Czech Republic. Thank you for being here tonight. Tonight, we're delighted to have five previous World Citizen Award recipients with us. Irwin Ike Belk, 2003. Erskine and Crandall Balls, hold your applause. Erskine and Crandall Balls, 2005. Dr. Francis Robicek, 2007. Smoke and Margaret Bissell, 2013. And Michael Tarwater, 2014. Thank you for being here tonight. As you all know, the board members of the World Affairs Council of Charlotte help govern, direct, and promote, promote the council's activities and programs. Many of our corporate sponsors here tonight have a representative serving on our board, and I want to thank all of them for the continued and strong support of the World Affairs Council of Charlotte. I would now like to ask the World Affairs Council board members present here tonight to please stand and be recognized for all that you do for our organization. Please stand. Yay. I also want to use this opportunity to quickly thank several people who were critically important in making this evening a success. First of all, Jessica Graham, Vice President of Communications and Community Relations at Belk Incorporated for her guidance and assistance in planning and execution of tonight's event. Hold your applause. Also, the co-chairs of the World Citizen Award Dinner, consisting of numerous prominent Charlotte business and academic leaders, as well as, as, well as colleagues and close personal friends of Tim Belk. World Citizen Award Dinner 2015 co-chairs include Iris and George Battle. Hold your applause, please. Kathy Bissant, Margaret and Smokey Bissell, Betsy and Bill Blue, Crandall and Erskine Bowles, Trisha and John Boyer, David Carroll, Janice and Frank Dode, Lisa and Philip Dubois, Lynn and Brian Good, Peggy and Jim Hines, Kathleen Jameson, Shannon and Michael Jones, Leslie and Michael Marcicano, Hugh McCall, Meg and Bob Morgan, Anna and Tom Nelson, Sally and Russell Robinson, Pat Rogers, Margaret and John Switzer, Ann and Michael Tarwater, Betsy Fleming and Ed Weisiger, and finally, Beth and Tony Zeiss. Thank you all for co-chairing this amazing event. I have a couple more thank yous. I would like to thank our generous sponsors of this evening's dinner. They're all listed in your program and have appeared on the screen during dinner behind me. When you do see representatives of these companies, please express your appreciation to them. I also want to thank the 2015 World Citizen Award Dinner Committee, which worked untold hours over the past six months to make this success 
this evening the success it is. So thank you all for being here tonight. And we will now start our former part of this evening with the chairman of the World Affairs Council, Charlotte Millie Cox. Millie? I also want to say that we made a little boo-boo earlier. We forgot to mention a, a very special and dear person, and that's the Honorary Consul of Germany, Klaus Becker. Klaus? Where is Klaus? I think he's here. There we go. Klaus has also been one of those visionaries very involved in Charlotte's international community for many, many years and a leader. Thank you, Lubomir. It's a pleasure to see you all here tonight and to see everybody having fun. We're here to honor a wonderful and remarkable man tonight for our World Citizen Award 2015, Mr. Tim Belk. This event tonight benefits the World Affairs Council of Charlotte and the work that we do. I know that most of you know what we're all about, education and dialogue. And we've got a pretty good track record. Some of you may not realize that we were birthed at UNC Charlotte in 1987. And I'd like to thank Chancellor Philip Dubois, who couldn't be with us tonight, and Joel Gallegos, who is here and a member of our board, Vice Provost for International Programs at UNC Charlotte, for all of your steadfast support and gener generosity through the years. When the World Affairs Council was launched in the late 80s, Charlotte was slowly but steadily opening to the world. Having a World Affairs Council was seen as an important way of helping put Charlotte on the world map as more cities across America were competing for foreign investment. It was also a way to assure that we had an informed citizenry and that our middle managers who were beginning to do more and more business abroad were informed about world events. Back in the 1980s, the flagship councils were Chicago, Philadelphia, New York, San Francisco, and they were able to attract the top foreign affairs experts and diplomats to their city. But we had dreamers here in Charlotte, Harold Josephson, who you'll hear about in a few minutes, people here in the audience. I saw Mike Allman earlier, Honorary Consul of Mexico, Wayne Cooper, from the get-go. They were on the ground level dreaming that Charlotte should come, should, could someday be a place where a president of a country would come and announce a new policy. Well, fast forward. Fast forward to now. Our World Affairs Council of Charlotte is now among the top 10 largest councils across America. And they're over, well, they're right around 100. Lubomir, our dynamic president and CEO, is a force. Our programs have grown during his tenure, especially our education programs, serving more students and teachers than ever before. LJ sits on our national board in Washington, D.C., and he's a leader on that board. There are huge benefits to that. He is able to attract the most sought-after speakers in the areas of world affairs, foreign policy, and economics. And these speakers are in and out of Charlotte on almost a weekly basis. And he does this with a very talented staff of three people, Charlotte, Danielle, and Stephanie. He squeezes every drop out of a day. Just since last fall, we've had ambassadors here from Germany, Belgium, Hungary, Sweden, Spain, and US ambassadors to Panama and Egypt. We've had CEO, CEOs of US companies, senior military leaders, and well-known journalists, economics, all part of our speaker series. Now, I mentioned education. We have quite a few educational programs. I'm not going to go into all of them tonight. But I am going to say when speakers come to town, among our audience are students from our area independent and public schools. And over the last few years, thanks to your generosity, we're able to offer public school students a chance to attend our speaking events at no cost. And you all, when you see the looks on the faces of these students, all dressed up, well prepared, 
with their teachers, it just gives you a thrill to see them get up to the microphone and ask a question of an ambassador. I mean, just think if you're sitting in a 10th grade German class and your teacher says, come on, let's go uptown, you're gonna meet the German ambassador and by the way, you need to formulate a good thoughtful question. It's really exhilarating. The benefit of our speaker series is that everyone who attends is engaged. Sure, you can sit home and watch the news hour with a glass of wine, but you can come uptown and meet a speaker and engage a speaker who is live, and that's an advantage. A second big program we run in the field of education is World Quest, and I saw Jennifer Roberts, Watson Roberts here earlier. She is actually one of the uh, people who started World Quest. It's an international trivial pursuit contest, and it was started uh, probably about 15, 20 years ago now, and it's played nationally. It's a big event uptown. 500, 600 people attend, including 12 area high schools. It's always held in November, and I encourage you to come. It's not scary. It's fun. And lastly, our Council Scholar Program. LJ is going to introduce our 10 Council Scholar winners in just a few minutes. But here again, this is a program that just touches my heart. We have so many wonderful public school teachers in this community, but you all, so few of them have traveled abroad. How can you be teaching Spanish your whole life and you've never been to a Spanish-speaking country or maybe you've been a classics teacher and never been to Rome or Italy? So these grants enable our teachers to get out in the world and bring back their enthusiasm to the classroom. So with that, I'll turn it back over to LJ. Thank you, Millie. Well, as Millie mentioned, one of our teacher level initiatives is the Council Scholars Program, wherein we select outstanding area educators who have demonstrated a commitment to international education and to whom we provide scholarships to, you, to be used to attend international conferences or advanced education abroad activities that will enrich their perspectives and enhance classroom experiences. This year, we have selected 10 local educators from the greater Charlotte area as a council scholars, and we have nine of them present with us tonight. We're pleased to announce our 2014-2015 winners this evening. I'd like to welcome them up to the stage. As they come on, let me introduce you to them and share with you what they're going to do this summer, thanks to the grants from the World Affairs Council of Charlotte. Molly Roland, a German language teacher from South Mecklenburg High School. Molly will attend a two-week intensive language program in Madrid, Spain. Gretchen Frederick, who teaches third-year Spanish and AP Spanish at Charlotte Latin School. Gretchen will travel to Seville, Spain, to pioneer a new Spanish language curriculum based on interviews and interaction with Spanish natives. Trish Bollinger, a French teacher with Canon School. Trish will travel to Haiti with volunteers for peace in July 2015. With a focus on intercultural exchange for community service, Trish will assist locals and other volunteers in providing educational activities for children, which will include English, music, and art. Anna Marie Alexander, who teaches third grade reading, writing, math, science, and social studies at Benton Heights Elementary Schools of the Arts. Anna Marie will be attending a Spanish immersion program in Peru and will be living with a host family. Sarah Goodman, a sixth grade science teacher at Providence Day School. Sarah will be continuing her study of sustainable science through the Discover Iceland program. Carmen Cardenas, a 10th grade Spanish teacher at William A. Ho High School. Carmen will be completing the second phase of her master's in teaching Spanish as a second language at the University of Granada in Granada, Spain. Lindsay Gallagher, an eighth grade global studies teacher at Piedmont Middle School. Lindsay will participate in a teacher study tour that will cover Eastern European history and culture. 
for the Global Exploration for Educators organization. Lauren Blackford, a fifth grade elementary arts teacher with Ria View Elementary School. Lauren will travel to Greece this summer with the Global Exploration for Educators organization. During the program, Lauren will collaborate with other educators to develop lesson plans and art-related curriculum for her classroom. Alison Tarwater, a ninth through 12th grade Spanish teacher at David W. Butler High School. Alison will be traveling throughout Spain over the summer to improve her Spanish language skills and build a deeper global awareness and understanding of local cultures. So please join us in congratulating this year's Council Scholars and in giving these inspirational teachers a big round of applause. Thank you all. This is amazing. You should be at the interviews with these teachers. It's very hard to determine the 10 that we're sending each year. Amazing future we have. We now move to the presentation of the World Affairs Council's Harold Josephson Award. Each year, we select a deserving recipient who has made significant contribution to our organization and embodies our goal of promoting global thinking and education. We're honored this year to have Firo Spira, former chairman of the board of the World Affairs Council, introduce this year's award recipient. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Firo Spira. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is my very great pleasure to announce the recipient of the Harold Josephson Award for 2015. The award celebrates the rich and enduring legacy of Harold Josephson, history professor at UNC Charlotte, who convinced our local business leaders that Charlotte was ready to have its own World Affairs Council. These leaders and visionaries understood what a World Affairs Council could do for our city. They knew that more and more international companies were seeking to do business here, and that with their growing presence, our citizens had to be better informed on world issues, and our business executives had to broaden their perspectives and develop new international relationships. This year's recipient of the Harold Josephson Award has an interestingly multifaceted background. Robert Holcomb served in the US Army Corps of Engineers for 21 years and has subsequently held numerous engineering and senior management positions with international companies in the United States and abroad. His assignments have required him to live and work in Turkey, Germany, Argentina, Chile, Brazil, Peru, and Ecuador. He and his wife, Geraldine, came to Charlotte in 1992 and have made Charlotte their permanent home. Robert is currently the US Regional Manager for Arriva Federal Services, and he is also the immediate past chair of the World Affairs of Council, uh, Council of Charlotte, and under his leadership, the Council has excelled in its mission and its outreach programs. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing Robert Holcomb. Well, I'm, I'm honored, um, I'm just absolutely delighted to be here tonight and very appreciative to the World Affairs Council for this uh, recognition and this honor. I've served with the World Affairs Council on the board for almost 15 years. Um, I've seen it grow from the nucleus uh, back in the, the mid 90s to the force that it is today here in Charlotte, and I think you'll all agree, for those of you who come to our events and see what the World Affairs Council of Charlotte does and the reputation that it has built with having government officials, ambassadors, uh, captains of industry come to Charlotte and talk to us on global issues, I think you'll agree that it is a very worthwhile uh, cause and it helps promote global thinking as well as international education. 
And I, I kind of want to, I really want to thank a few folks that have helped me over the last several years as I've worked on the board uh, with the uh, board of directors. Uh, but I really want to kind of say thank you very much to my wife, Gerilyn. She is um, a magnificent person, always supportive, always there, listen to keep me grounded. And she's survived two careers, one with the military and one in civilian life. And she keeps telling me my third career is going to be at Home Depot, <laughs> which I believe. And I want to thank her for all her support throughout these years and everything that you've done, even here for the World Affairs Council. When she had a business, she supported many of the activities of the World Affairs Council, donated portions of her product. And I can't thank you enough, because any time I had to go to someone, Gerilyn stood up and helped whenever I needed uh, some support. So thank you. I would be remiss if I didn't also acknowledge my lovely daughter, Kelly, Kelly Taylor, who I am absolutely amazed at her breadth and her abilities to multitask. She's a young person. She lives in Fayetteville, yet she's come here tonight, full-time job. I have a grandchild that she takes care of. She has two households that she maintains because her husband is reassigned to the Pentagon a special operations officer with uh, special forces. And therefore, she insisted on being here tonight, and I'm so grateful and thankful that she was able to come here and bring my grandson. <laughs> and naturally, I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge Lubomir, who is right here. Lubomir, our president and CEO of the World Affairs Council, I've worked with Lubomir since he came on almost seven years, seven or eight years ago as our president and CEO, and he's done a magnificent job in making the World Affairs Council of Charlotte the organization that it is. And he is at every event here in town, uh, and the staff that Lubomir has crafted is fantastic. Charlotte, Stephanie, Danielle, they work together relentlessly to put on these events. And when you have a room of 700 people, 800 people as we do tonight, it's no small event to be able to pull this off. And I thank Lubomir for all the programs that, uh, that Lubomir and the staff put on. They do a fantastic job. Thank you, Lubomir. We have a fantastic board. We have over 25 board members and they make up various corporate entities here in Charlotte. We have the lawyers, the doctors, the Indian chiefs, you name it, we have them on the board. And um, they do a fantastic job in providing us guidance, as well as in incorporating uh, different activities and events into our World Affairs events. And I want to thank the board for all their support over the five years that I was the chairman. And I certainly appreciate the hard work by the board. I do want to mention UNC Charlotte. Uh, I know Phil's not here tonight, Phil DeVois, um, the chancellor. He has been a tremendous resource for the World Affairs Council. And Joel Gallegos, who is the assistant provost for international programs. And Joel uh, is on our board. And UNCC has been fantastic in supporting the World Affairs Council of Charlotte and hosting us on their campus and supporting our events. So I, I have a special uh, fondness in my heart for UNC Charlotte. They are a tremendous resource. And I want to say all of the educational programs that we have here in Charlotte through Tony Zeiss with CPCC, um, all the different uh, schools, Davidson, uh, that we have here in, in the local regional area are part of the World Affairs Council and they've done a fantastic job in supporting our educational programs. I want to make one last special thanks, a kind of a strange one, and it's really to two companies. Um, Duke Energy and Arriva. And I want to say this in this context. When I, uh, back in the early 90s, I worked for Duke Energy. And for 10 years, uh, I was with Duke. And Duke tapped me when I came back from an assignment in Argentina 
uh, after I'd been down there for two years and asked me to be their representative on the World Affairs Council of Charlotte, my first exposure to the World Affairs Council. And I became their board representative. And through that experience, I learned a lot about the board, its mission, uh, the World Affairs Council's jobs, and I was very struck by the fact that Duke would assign me the responsibility of representing them on the board. Eventually, our portion of Duke was sold to Arriva, and um, Arriva, rather than um, not joining the World Affairs Council, I continued on serving with Arriva as a board representative, and Arriva picked up the, the same philosophy that Duke did and continued to support the World Affairs Council. And so I want to thank those two companies specifically because of my personal experience because they understand the responsibility of being a good corporate citizen. They're both that way and we have lots of companies here in Charlotte and I look at the board members and the companies they represent and the support that they have for the right thing for community support, community activities, and being a good corporate citizen. And I want to thank all those companies out there who have supported the World Affairs Council as either sponsors or event participants. You've done a fantastic job and you've helped us make the programs that we have here today the programs that they are. So with that, while I was chairman, I often stood in front of groups like this and would say, if you're not a member of the World Affairs Council, shame on you, because it's a fantastic organization. And I really appreciate all the sponsorship, all the support that we've had from the community. And I'm just deeply moved and deeply honored that I would be selected for this year's Harold K. Josephson Award. It's a worthwhile organization. It promotes global thinking international education, as you can see with our council scholars that we have selected this year. And when I came on the board, we were picking one council scholar to go overseas each year, and that was back in the late 90s. Now we're sending 10 this year. It's just incredible, and the, the progress that we've made. And so I want to thank Lubomir, the World Affairs Council of Charlotte, the board of directors, and all the other individuals who are associated with this program. Thank you so very much for honoring me with this uh, recognition. Thank you, Robert, for your service to the World Affairs Council. And don't go away. Oh, I'm sorry. This is heavy, so you need to put it somewhere. <laughs> Can I hold it with two hands? Yes. yes. I shall do that. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bob was a wonderful chairman of our board for five years. Dynamic president, but now here's the reason we're here tonight. The World Citizen Award presentation to Tim Belk. This is an award that has been given by the World Affairs Council since 1990. The previous award winners are listed in your program and Lubomir has announced the award recipients who are with us tonight. They represent outstanding, internationally known individuals of whom our community is very, very proud. The purpose of the award, as you know, is to honor prominent citizens with Carolina's ties who've distinguished themselves by accomplishments and achievements that have had local, regional, and international significance. Well, what, tonight we're honoring Tim, a remarkable man who's contributed significantly to the economic growth of our region. Tim is president and chief executive officer of Belk Incorporated, and in just a minute, we will hear a fascinating account of the global reach of Belk with Tim at the helm. On a personal note, Tim comes from an extraordinary family that has supported global thinking, education, and civic engagement in our region for multiple generations. And Tim is part of this legacy the Belk name is integral to Charlotte's character and identity. It has been with many of us since we were small children. We have watched Belk stores grow, expand, and modernize, just as we have seen our city do the same. 
We've seen the Belk name beside, behind many of our region's international initiatives, the Belk Business Program at UNC Charlotte Business College, and the Belk Scholars at Davidson College, the John Belk International Program at Queens University. These programs all focus on education, on giving our young people the skills they need to thrive in an interconnected world. Tim embodies the characteristics that have helped shape and define our region. Determination, dependability, honesty, hard work, and vision. Being open to the world is important to Tim and his family, not only in business, but in their daily lives. Tim and his lovely wife, Sarah, have opened their home to foreign exchange students, have raised their five children to go out in the world and serve. From small town beginnings, to a major force in the Southeast, to a globally connected workplace, let's watch the video and learn more about Tim's leadership and Belk in our community. Each year, the World Affairs Council of Charlotte recognizes an individual whose contributions to the city, region, and international community have enhanced Charlotte's global standing in the world. While the Belk family and business are well known in Charlotte and this region for their impacts across the Southeast, many may not be aware of the business's global role. From its beginning in Monroe, North Carolina in 1888, Belk has grown to the nation's largest family-owned and operated department store, with close to 300 stores in 16 states, a growing online presence, and with business ties in 17 countries. As the chairman and CEO of Belk Inc., Tim Belk has led this growth and global influence through his civic, business, and personal leadership. Well, Tim is somebody who intellectually understands that we live in a global economy. His business is affected by things happening all over the planet. And he knows that if Charlotte is going to be a global city, one that truly competes on the world stage, we have to embrace the growing diversity of our population. We have to reach out and establish connections to people and organizations all over the planet. So that's really been a part of who he is and he really dedicates time now uh, to meet with our international partners like Lee and Fung on a regular basis trying to gain from them additional insights uh, because our business is changing it's becoming much more diverse and many of our important business partners are overseas. Tim was probably the first person to really say to us, and this is probably about 10 years ago, that we've got to start growing our international business. We've got to take this part of our business and make it a bigger part of the Belk strategy. So he was really one of the forefathers of pushing us forward in this strategy. Team would really help us to um, bring that, uh, you know, connect with some suppliers in Asia so that they help us to reach out to them and uh, um, get in front of them and uh, help them to build that relationship eventually. Under team's leadership, we brought more than a dozen Asian firms as well as European firms to Charlotte. A couple that you've all heard of, the Siemens Corporation announced during that time a major expansion from 1,000 to 1,800 jobs. Uh, it was during Tim's time as chamber chair that Electrolux announced uh, that they were moving their North American headquarters from Augusta, Georgia to Charlotte, uh, locating here for many of the same reasons that companies like Belk are located here. He knows that for Charlotte to grow, we have to attract people from all over the place. Tim um, has been um, a great leader as it relates to looking at talent globally um, and looking at uh, new ideas and new ways of bringing in talent and he has been an absolutely great leader and not from the back seat but he's absolutely in the front seat leading for multicultural diversity at Belk. And the mix of resources is continuing to um, change um, you know as our customer base is obviously also changing I think some of that reflection shows in employees as well as you know all other factors of business under Tim's leadership it has been a great support system for all the folks that uh, especially in IT that you know international global resources that have come in to uh, build a vision for the company for the future. Tim's a leader who's shown strong support for the arts uh, through organizations like the Beckler Museum 
uh, of modern art, which is so global in its impact, a strong supporter of the Foundation for the Carolinas, his leadership of big data out at UNC Charlotte, the marriage of knowledge coming out of the Belk School of Business with knowledge coming out of the College of Computing and Informatics. He's a leader who gets those things and puts his time and effort and resources behind uh, making good things happen for his city. Belk takes uh, supporting the community very seriously. It goes all the way back to my grandfather, William Henry Belk, through John and Tom's legacy. Uh, Tim has clearly embraced that in other endeavors. Supporting the community is really a business principle that we live with because we know that strong communities, there'll be customers that want to shop. It, it's very synergistic. It's, it's great to have a leader, um, you know, who sees you as a person, um, as, as somebody who's uh, contributing to the organization rather than, you know, how you look or, um, you know, what accent you might have. What you have just seen is just a brief glimpse of an individual that contributes so much to the fabric of the Carolinas in the southeast, but it's just the surface of a much larger organization that Tim has capably managed. And moving into that larger picture, it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Bruce Rockowich, Chief Executive Officer and Vice Chairman of the Global Brands Group, who will introduce our award recipient, Tim Belk. Now to most of us tonight, the fashion industry is a different world. It's a world in which Tim and Bruce thrive. I won't read you Bruce's entire bio because it's so extensive, but in a nutshell, Bruce's career has been focused in Asia. Um, excuse me. He's been chief executive of numerous companies, including Li Fung Group and Colby International. And in addition to his position at Global Brands Group, Bruce is the non-executive chairman of the Pure Group, which is a lifestyle, fitness, and yoga group operating in Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, and mainland China. Bruce is a member of the advisory board for the Wharton School's J.H. Baker Retailing Center, which is an industry research center for retail at the University of Pennsylvania. He's a board member of the Educational Foundation for Fashion Industries, and he is a member of the Global Advisory Council of the Women's Tennis Association. Bruce himself has been a recipient many times over of prestigious awards. In 2008, he was ranked first by Institutional Investor for Asia's Best CEOs in Consumer category. In 2010, he was ranked as one of the world's 30 best CEOs by Barron's. In 2012, Bruce was named Asia's best CEO at Corporate Governance Asian Excellence Recognition Awards. Please join me in welcoming Bruce Ruckowitz. Uh, thank you. Uh, that was a good introduction. Uh, first, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I just got off the plane from Hong Kong, and uh, I thought it was just going to be a small gathering. Didn't prepare anything uh, for tonight, uh, as usual. Um, a, a few months ago, I was asked to come to Charlotte uh, um, to, to honor Tim. And, 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 uh, and, and if anybody knows my schedule, it's pretty difficult for me to be anywhere at any time. Um, but the one thing I wanted to do was be here tonight. And I'm so glad I made it. Uh, I didn't realize you had so many friends, Tim. Uh, <laughs> when he comes out to Hong Kong, it's just a few people. He's no entourage. And uh, I thought it would be a small crowd here tonight. And I'm very impressed on everything that everybody has said about Tim and, and the movie and, and ev everything about Tim. And, and one of the things that I kind of grappled with before I got here was um, what can I possibly say about Tim that everybody in this room doesn't know already. Uh, he, he's so famous here. Uh, he's, he's, he's been around. The family is, is as, as, you, as you've said, is part, part of the whole uh, culture uh, of Charlotte. And they've done so many good things uh, as a company. 
Um, so what, what could I say? And the second thing that I thought would be very difficult uh, to talk about Tim is because he does not like anybody to talk about him. And so uh, he hates when every, the focus is on him. And, and well, Tim, I'm sorry. Uh, tonight's about you and tough. I'm going to have to talk about you. Um, I was given orders not to say anything about Tim. Um, third thing is I had to get a, a fly about 6,000 miles to get here. Uh, so all, all in all, it, it was something that I'm, gl I'm glad I'm here. And I really wanted to talk about uh, Belk, Tim, uh, from, from a different perspective. Everyone has seen uh, what they have done here in this part of the world, uh, all of you in this room. But nobody has a chance to see what, what goes on in, in Asia. And the history is very long with Belk stores. Um, personally, I've been working together as partners uh, with the Belk family for more than 30 years um, with Tim's uncle, father, um, and it's, it's gone on for a very long time, and, it, and it, for a very long time, it wasn't a very big business. Uh, it, it, it started more than 40 years ago. Personally, as I said, I've been doing it for about 30 years myself and involved in it. Um, but what I can say is that always through thick and thin, they have been the, the most amazing people, the family, um, the, the Belk stores. And when you're working in a global environment and you're working six, seven, eight thousand miles away from your partners, the one thing that bridges the gap is trust. And, and if you don't have trust, you can't do business. The days of letters, letters of credit, and financial uh, mechanisms to make sure that things go well are over. It's, it's really about relationship and trust. And through all the years, and it's been many, many years, they've stuck with, with the suppliers, they've stuck with our company um, through thick and thin, and they've been incredibly great partners. And they have the same reputation um, in Asia, Central America, as they have here in Charlotte. They have built up this incredible reputation and loyalty from the suppliers around the world. And when, you, when I look at Belk today, it's truly a global company. Uh, all, although, ironically, it only you know, sells regionally in this part of the world. But under Tim's leadership, I've seen an incredible transformation of the company. And I, I'm seeing it from, as a supplier, as, as a friend, as a confidant. Um, Tim uh, not only has uh, built up together with us an incredible supply chain that rivals any great retailer in the world and, and really covered, spans the globe. Um, he, he's, he's also been very concerned at the same time, uh, not, about, not just about price, quality, that, that's a given but also about sustainability, also about uh, the treatment of, of, of the workers in the factories. So everything is, in the last many years that Tim has been the CEO of, of the Belk Stores, it, 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 he has evolved the company into living by global standards. And, and a lot of people that are, that are say, a regional retailer haven't done that. And that's a, that's a, a reason why Belk Stores is still here, and most regional department stores are gone, uh, because not only has he, has he built up a global business from a supply side, also from an a open-mindedness to what, it, what is the best pra practice in the world. He, he constantly is looking for what other people are doing that's better, constantly trying to improve, constantly asking me about this retailer that retailer, and he travels. He asked me to arrange a meeting in London uh, with a friend of ours um, to, to see how a London retailer is doing. And, and so o over the years, he, he, he has globalized Belk stores. And, and he's, he's created something that uh, truly doesn't exist in the United States uh, anymore. A, a regional department store that is global, and, and it, couldn't be, it couldn't be a better person. When I, I have a chance to, 
to spend a lot of time with, uh, with CEOs around the world from all the best retailers and brand people. Uh, there couldn't be a better person uh, to get this award than Tim Bilk, from my, from my point of view. And he really exemplifies what a global company should look like. And at the same time, uh, and he's been very open in the whole management with Johnny and, and uh, John and every, everybody in the company has been very open to our people coming here and hosting our people and, and making them feel one and the same, that you're part of the same company. And when you're working in a global arena, that's very important. Not, uh, and not only uh, uh, our people, you've also been very uh, nice to me. Uh, uh, two or three times, uh, Tim's invited me to the uh, Pro-Am here, uh, Wells Fargo. Uh, and one time we were, we were really lucky because the, the night before uh, on the draw, uh, everyone's nervous of who you're going to get, what pro you're going to get. And, uh, you know, some want Tiger Woods, and uh, everybody wants Tiger Woods. Um, and, and we got Phil Mickelson. And, th and, and that was an incredible thing for me. And, uh, and the story didn't end there. So we, we, we actually, um, uh, next, next day, we teed off on the first hole. Uh, I was shaking. I think you were shaking too, Tim. Uh, we're afraid, all we want to do is not hit the people that are on the fairway. Uh, and, and we did that on the first hole. Uh, after that, I, I don't remember. But we got to the sixth or seventh hole and, and we, we've had a chance to be part of history together, something that Phil has never done. On, on the seventh hole, he sat down, turned to us, and said, do you know where the nearest bathroom is? <laughs> and we're in the middle of, you know, we're in the, middle of the golf course, and, and we found one. And he got so sick uh, that he couldn't go on. And it was the first time in his whole career that he ever defaulted in a tournament, was with Tim and I. <laughs> and, and the story keeps going because uh, my, this you don't know one of my mother's friends is reading a book and turns out our caddy wrote a book and, and put us in the book uh, both of us, that story so we're infamous and we're famous together and I, and I really thank you for everything that you've done for our company and for the world um, and for the world of sourcing uh, you've, you've just done an amazing job. I, couldn't, I can talk all day about you, but I'm not allowed to. So uh, I, I would like all of you to join me in honoring 2015 World Citizen recipient, Mr. Tim Belk, Chairman and CEO of Belk Stores. Thank you very much. Everybody can sit down. Well, Bruce, you know, I don't know where Bruce went, but it is such an honor to have you here tonight. The extra effort that you made coming all the way here um, is just, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm so touched by that. And he's been our partner for many years, and partnerships at Belk are very special. Our periods of growth wouldn't have been possible without the help of Lee and Fung. Um, and so I would say as, as much as anybody, Bruce deserves this recognition, you know, as much as me or maybe more so. And, and I would just say one thing that, I don't know if you heard one part of the story with Phil Mickelson, Bruce, do you know why he went into the hospital, really? I don't know if it was your golf swing or my golf swing, but I think that's why he went into the hospital. So I just thought I would let that be. Um, but before I say anything else, let me acknowledge that I've heard from a lot of you during the last several days, and your questions weren't about tonight's dinner. <laughs> so to answer your question, I'm fine. We're fine. We're doing great. 
Now that we have that out of the way, <laughs> I wanted to say a big thank you to all of our friends and sponsors and to the World Affairs Council who have made this dinner such an incredible evening. Um, Millie and LJ, y'all have been the driving force behind the World Affairs Council, pushing us in ways we need to grow, and we really appreciate that. We hope you'll keep on doing that. It's very humbling to be up here, and I so appreciate the kind words in the videos and the things people have said. You know, I've never thought of myself as a world citizen, but I realize in accepting this award, it's not only for myself, but it's for our company. It's also for those who've come before me. My dad, Uncle John, Uncle Ike, Aunt Sarah, and Uncle Ike and Aunt Sarah are here tonight. And if y'all would just stand or raise your hand, we'd like to thank you. I also want to recognize my wife, Sarah, son, Thomas, brother, Johnny, and his wife, Kim, who've been mentioned, my sister, Katie, and also my mom, Kat. As you can tell, it's a family affair. Thank you all for being here. Johnny and I believe in this community's place on the world stage. We see the elements we see the elements that are essential to Charlotte's positioning as a global city. Our airport, a strong urban core, a commitment to diversity that welcomes people from different countries and different cultures, and leadership that thinks for the long term and puts international high on our agenda. You've heard how our supply chain extends to Asia and now to Central America. You've also heard over time, how we're investing heavily in technology and in digital to accelerate our move along the omnichannel road. While many companies are setting up shop in Silicon Valley and in Seattle, we believe we can do that right here. Last, last week, I had lunch with a group of rising stars in IT, most of whom weren't born in this country. They could go anywhere. They came to Charlotte because of the opportunity to do great things. So how do we create an environment for their families that make them, makes them feel comfortable and makes them feel like they belong? How do we create the right opportunity for them professionally? One step we've taken recently, as you heard, was to give a gift to UNCC, a professorship in data analytics and also one in innovation. We feel this interaction between business and academics can create the right kind of environment to attract and retain this type of talent, as well as increase the pipeline in some fields that are really growing. So that's the message that I wanna leave with you tonight. Charlotte's a city of opportunity. We've, some, we've come so far in the past 10 to 15 years. We've been blessed. I encourage us all to think about what do we need to do over the next 15 years? We need to start that dialogue now. Our best days are still ahead of us. So thank you very much for this honor you're giving me tonight. And Millie and LJ. Thank you for attending this evening, for helping us honor this truly remarkable individual, Tim Belk. <laughs>